Thank you for staying with us. Now it's time to look at what the national dailies are saying this morning and just check out stories on the headlines. Um, joining us to review the papers is Chris Kende Wandu, is a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. And he's joining us here. Well, I thought he'd be joining us from Ivory Coast because Nigeria is playing. <laughs> um, but yes, he's joining us here from Lagos State. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Don't worry. What's the qualified for the finance? <laughs> tell us you have missed fufu. Tell us you missed fufu. And That's why rice. you came back. And our jollof rice, which is the best in the world. Tell us you missed that. <laughs> not qualification. Yes, I did bronze better. And dollar is not smiling at mm. all. Oh, <laughs> you have a point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. point. We're well, going to be going into all of that. But I'm sure you've, you've heard the news about the import duties and the the jump jumpflation yes. as, <laughs> as yamgo likes to call it but anyways let's start with the punch this morning um nigeria seek relief as states get 3.3 trillion naira allocations the riders here are protesters lament rising inflation governors rally fg to avert food crisis another one is states local government received 3.3 trillion naira from july to december quality of life degenerating residents says is this the case um of everybody are you part of this are you part of the residents that are saying um the quality of life is you know degenerating or i mean life is good on your side the grass is greener but i want to just know your thoughts on all of this and how you feel in particular see see question you didn't want me <laughs> You didn't mind me. <laughs> no, the grass might be greener on your side. I think there's there's some people who, you know, they're they're good. They don't they don't feel all of these things that we're feeling. Uh, now those where they are so rock now. Am I a politician? Now those where they use uh, Ghana must go to collect uh, money. They are the only ones that are not feeling that. And some of them, I mean, even their extended families are uh, feeling it because if you feel you're in government and you're having all, all the money or collecting all the money, you mm -hmm. still have relatives that are poor. Every, all your relatives are not rich. Mm. Those in the village, even those in town, there are still long distance relatives that are still finding. Them. So, yeah, they touch everybody. It touch everybody directly or indirectly. The situation of things is getting worse by the day, and um, we are not even know, we don't even know where we are heading to. The average cost of living in Nigeria is excruciating. People cannot meet, people are not even talking of people cannot even feed, talk mm. less of including themselves and housing themselves. You come around and see the, 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 on a daily basis how landlords and tenants are fighting. <laughs> and then tenants are finding it difficult to pay their rents and landlords are saying, please get out of my house. So it is it's that bad. So it, it's a long chain. It, 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 I don't even know how to put it, but the fact is that um, since um, they are worse, a, a, a bag of rice costs about 70,000 naira now. Yeah. Bag of rice. I'm sure you know about that. Yeah. And so many, and so many other commodities, the basic uh, necessities of life, which is food, water, shelter, um, and health. Go and see how much drugs cost mm. now. I have read paracetamol that used to be, you know, that such that you, they used to set a uh, hundred naira if they are in those days. Yeah. Uh, it's as much as five hundred close to one thousand. So and that is it. So everybody is feeling the pain feeling the pinch and um and that doesn't seem to be a solution all we have been told uh, is assurances assurances it will get better it will get worse than um after getting worse and uh, to get better when will it be better and that's the question i've always asked when will it be better that's... We are even we're we even talking you know when we talk of dollar 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 when you dollar you say dollar dollar it is more of an elitist thing not an, how many Nigerians use, use dollar? How many Nigerians have dollars? Some people don't even have as much as two thousand naira in their pocket on a daily basis. A family of five, some children are out of school because their parents cannot even get give them transportation to go to school. I'm not talking about paying school fees. So it's a different bargain. One is to go to school, have transport to go to school. Another one is also to feed those children before they go to school. Hmm. So many parents are finding it difficult to send their children to school now. That is how bad it is. Well, uh, even then, uh, as we're talking about how biting this is, Senate is set to raise customs 5 trillion naira revenue target. Uh, maybe to something else, maybe it will be 15 trillion naira. So anything mm. that is coming through customs will have to be costlier and the ripple effect will be on the people. 
Well, the, the, you know, it is much is easier said than done. Most often than not, we always find a way of trying to make things more for our people, as it were. And um, yes, the National Assembly uh, raises the uh, custom um, uh, tariffs and also uh, expectation in terms of revenues. Uh, yes, yeah, it is the ability, but the fact remains that that also is going to add more problem to Nigerians. Go and check out an average the cost of a vehicle now imported vehicle. I'm talking of Tokumbo. Tokumbo vehicles. Nobody. It's only the, the very very rich that buy brand new vehicles. The Tokumbo vehicles is out of the reach of the common man. Hmm. An average Nigerian cannot buy a vehicle. Even the one you have, you can't maintain it because. <laughs> Yes, of course now. You, my sister, you know. Of course. I, I was thinking of changing my car recently. Yeah. And when, oh. I, when I saw the prices, I was saying about 17 million. And I'm like, I cannot do this. I can't. We, I have to manage go, the one I have. Change car. We go investigate you. We go better do you. We go better do you. We change car. Well, we cannot even find it. We cannot even buy fuel. <laughs> Some of us now pack our vehicles. They it's end ridiculous. Up the yes, it's that bad. Because if you want to take an average uh, Uber or whatever, yeah. uh, so called, do you know how much it costs? The to, prices to have skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. So it is it is that terrible. Uh, so um, so when you talk about the custom raising tariff and all that, it's neither here nor there for me because we're, but for me, the basic thing is that what Nigerians want. Nigerians, are, you know, Nigerians are the most patient people in the world. Resilience is the word. To, yes, I used to equate Nigerians. Generally, uh, like Arsenal fans, if you're a football fan, Arsenal fans, Arsenal fans come are on. More committed, committed. Come on, Mr. Fans. Chris. Come on, Mr. Chris. Come on. I know. Are you you're, 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 you're targeting me. I'm an Arsenal, Arsenal fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a believer. You know, say that they're patient when we're. Yeah, accept you know, my sympathy. How many years that, oh, we're going to win the Premiership? Oh, but we will. Yeah. Really soon. Yeah, we, know, fingers I'm crossed. Prepared. Yes, but you are the one of the most you are the most committed. Oh. Or like my own team of um, of um, uh, Manu. Anytime we lose, the, the hag must be sacked. Anytime we lose, <laughs> the hag must be sacked. In fact, Chelsea have not joined your joined your group because the thing I don't even know what that really? was. Really, you're here. talking <laughs> <now>. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 that, so what, yeah, what I'm just trying to say is that now we have Nigerians have done so. Are now so docile and are so prayerful now that all they do now is uh, <laughs> may God's will be done, may God will be done, and they have used religion as a weapon to be able to now make sure that we don't even ask for our rights, mm -hmm. and that is how bad it has got into. Nigerians don't even know where to turn to. We don't even know who to ask. We cannot even ask our our leaders questions. We cannot ask our elected. Uh, 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 politicians question we cannot ask our government questions and we continue to rule on this roller coaster take out since the of this government came in in may the quality of life between may till now and see how bad things have gotten everybody is crying the, the rich also cry the rich are also crying not only the poor the rich are also crying because the rich cannot even sleep because the poor are away that is how bad the situation is well, okay, so let me take one one more from here from the punch and I'll link it with The Guardian. So it says, Naira weakens as, at parallel markets rises at official windows. So we're talking about the, the, the Naira to the dollar right now. And then, as you know, most of um, our building materials are imported. So now on The Guardian, the major headline is building materials labor spike construction costs by 200%. What, what's your take on all of this? Then there's another smaller headline here that also says, poor citizens protest high cost of living, hardship in Mina, Oshun State. Well, Osho has taken the lead in these protests, um, protesting against the high cost of living. But what do you think about all of this? Um, the, the building materials that are skyrocketing, the fact that import duty you know, has been increased. There was a jump in, in less than 24 hours, two different prices for the import duty right now they are raising the 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 revenue for them from five trillion naira so what is your from yes what's what's your take on all of this and which way how, how do we even move from here is there any light at the end of the tunnel are we going to you know have some form of relief anytime soon or this is just our new normal 
that we have to chuck in and just know that, yes, we'll keep being resilient. You know, in my intro, I talked about the problem now that is existing between landlords and tenants. Yes. That's part of what I, you know, I said it in my mm -hmm, intro. Mm -hmm. And yes, because I forecast um, this is um, a part of the problem now because people cannot feed. It's only when you feed that you even think of having a shelter over your head. Mm. People are finding it difficult to pay their rents as tenants. In as much as I, I, I won't say I blame them, but the fact remains that the, ten, the, the landlord also built the house for him to also collect rent to feed his own family. Mm. So it's neither here nor there. If you cannot be able to pay the rent, then they have to move out. But you ask when they move out, where are they going? Should they go back to their villages? Would they be, that be the solution to the problem? It's mountain and mountain, a, 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 a problem as it is. Now we are looking at an issue. What are the materials for building of? Uh, the uh, building house, um, uh, building houses. Why you need cement? Why you need blocks? You need cement. Then you need iron. Um, that's iron rods and the likes. You need planks. Most of these things are locally sourced. Planks are locally sourced. Cement. We have cement companies um, are manufacturing. You have the Boa. You have the Dangote and the Beto and the rest of them. But what is the cost of cement? As of the last time I had, I had that. Cement is almost about 6,000 naira a bag now. Know how many it is going to take. We will then iron rods. We, we, um, we import some, but we're supposed to have. If we have done, and that is, that is the failure of government. If you know what Itakwe is known for, the um, Itakwe, Itakwe, the, the, the this thing at Itakwe, was it? I've forgotten the name now. We have this. Uh, um, uh, this uh, iron uh, um, iron rod or iron or um, um, this thing that uh, we built in uh, Nkogi State. Ajakuta use Ajakuta steel. Uh, yes, that is Ajakuta's name. Ajakuta steel. This was a recent back by the former president Urushego um, Basanjo. Uh, One, he was even a military go a military president of Nigeria, military heritage in Nigeria in the seventies, late seventies where the Russians were contracted to build that Ajakuta steel. If we have been able to follow that through, we would have had sufficient enough um, um, iron rods, iron listings in Nigeria that we don't need to import. In fact, we would have been exporting. That is what used to be Oshobo rolling mill. That used to be Alaja rolling mills. Some of the younger generations will be better. I'm sure my brother knows this one I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm sure he knows Yes, these are all rolling mills that we have built in those days, in the 70s, by the government, the military government, or not even civilian, the military government. But we were not able to sustain this. And everything went wrong, and that is everything collapsed. So now that what we do now is do more of importation of some of these materials. And you are talking about the dollar, uh, the naira to the dollar. Where the dollar, naira to the dollar is a and I'm predicting that you are looking for a solution. If there is not taken by the next one month, the dollar, is, the naira is going to be about two thousand naira to a dollar. Mm -hmm. The rate at which we are going, it is going to get mm -hmm. to that point mm -hmm. of about two, two. Yes, to that point because as of today, it's over five, one thousand five hundred, and it's still rising. And at a point in last week where we say, "Oh, there has been some kind of marginal drop," and then I was laughing. I said, "Marginal drop of two naira or whatever." Wait until next week, and it is rising again. I ask yourself, what are the fundamentals? What are the problems? What are the economic measures being put in place by government to be able to make sure that this does not? And that is why I said time and time again, most often than not, let us leave the messenger and follow the message. I think Abu Bakr has been reading the, uh, um, the former presidential candidate of Bidibi. We have been reading some fundamental issues which nobody is answering. They said they are abusing him. Oh, his opposition is because of 2027. He has a fundamental question. The NNPC said that it is going to borrow, borrow or collect $3 billion from a foreign bank in order to cushion the effect of the sliding Naira. And he asked, that money would have was taken. What has been effect? What has it been used to? Nobody is saying anything about that. NNPC is not talking. The federal government is not talking. $3 billion. 
And there have been so other instances. There were probably so many. What were you doing in what is it? The court and so you know, you know Bioma. You know, my sister, I remember, do you know Bioma? <laughs> yeah. Hey, now Bioma, you know the way they patch and do. Yes. Court and so, court and so. That is what we are doing with our economics now. Oh, okay. The city wake up today. Oh, so, um, all the banks in Nigeria, all the dollars in your, no sense on your, dispose of them. Bam. They, do, they will do that. Then they wake up again. Oh, what are I going to do now? Uh, those breaking the dollars. Uh, they, they, you know, no, no economic direction. Not, no, no plan. If there were a report by one of the newspapers, Conchatron, which the Central Bank has denied, it was even said that at a point that they should uh, um, as a converting money into mystery accounts of, some, of Nigerians into Naira without this thing. Coach has come out to say that stand, Coach came out with a disclaimer. They came out yesterday also to say we stand by our story. In as much as the Senate have said this was fact, but we got our information authoritative from the present somebody who is in top government who was this information, despite whatever. So you can see the kind of uh, panicking measure that is being. There doesn't seem to a direction. And I ask, what is the essence of an answer? Look at insecurity. I'm sure we're going to get to that one again. This oh. security is at the highest point that we've had probably in that three years. People are being killed. People are being kidnapped. Kidnappers now come to houses to pick people. It's, or like before, it's not that they will wait for you on the road. This time around, they come to houses to kidnap people. Two of us were killed in a kitty. So uh, a nursery school, not primary school, even that's like nursery school children kidnapped in a And their parents paid ransom. And it has become the norm. And every day you're shouting, oh, foreign investment. We are going to see for how can you have a how can you have foreign investment when the atmosphere, when the atmosphere, and also the country is not safe for such. Who will come and invest in a country that is not safe? It's a big problem, my dear. Well, the, the governor of the central bank of Nigeria, uh, that's Kadoso, says forex mm -hmm. reforms mm -hmm. is attracting FDIs. Uh, that is on the nation newspaper that's what he's claiming that the forex reforms are attracting fdi so maybe they have information that you don't have no uh, i don't I have information they don't have i want that whatever information i want to sit on the street i want to sit on the dollar i want to see on the dollar today i just came back going you're asking me about where i came back from after <laughs> and i said uh, uh, dollar is not smiling and that's the truth my sister dollar don't they smile <laughs> The dollar, the, the, the CF, uh, CFR to dollar is about 600 to, uh, to a dollar. Nigerian Naira is about 150 to a dollar. This is a West Africa country. 1,500, 1,500, 1, not 150. Yes, 1,500 to a dollar. But uh, uh, here, it's just about 600 of, their, 600 of their currency to a dollar. So you do the math. So that is, the, so, so whatever the, the CPA uh, uh, governor says is neither here for me. It's just like somebody had told us that Nigerians have this. I, I think it was, a, who was it that now? The one of the spokesmen to the president, yes, it was, it was a, okay. Nigerians have the lowest, uh, what, what is it called? I can't even remember what he said. In terms of, uh, oh, when it comes to, the, Nigerians have the cheapest food, the cheapest that. Cost of living. Yeah, right. Yes, 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 cost of living. Yes, Nigerians have the lowest cost of living. Somebody that is being fed. That man doesn't buy fuel. He doesn't buy fuel. <laughs> is the, is federal, yes, now. He, he, his car is big well. I'm talking of um, uh, what's his name? Uh, this uh, so, um, uh, Bayon Mononoga. He is big well. This vehicle is big well. The house is living in Abuja. He's big paid for from uh, Nigerian taxes, not his own personal cost. So he can wake up to say all, all sorts of things. So whatever the, 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 the governor set up by said, he's neither here nor there. Until he reflects, reflects on the dollar to the naira. I will not believe him. He can continue saying whatever he wants to say. All right, let's take the, um, this one from the Daily Independent. Um, it says Nigeria needs to borrow 21 uh, trillion naira in 2024 to avert bankruptcy. Now, there's a report that an average Nigerian owes about 384 864 384,864 naira. That's what we owe currently. So an average Nigerian owes this from all of our debt. And now they're saying we need to borrow an additional 21 trillion naira in 2024 to avert bankruptcy. So that means obviously our debt our debt is going to, you know, even rise. But what's your take on this one? My sister, now you owe me, I don't owe anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, don't owe anybody. 
I'm not Owen either. <laughs> uh, uh, so we, so we cleared that one. We got someone that said, I, I'm not owing anybody. I'm not owing anybody. Oh, <laughs> so, but, but, but the most serious thing, I'm not owing anybody. Let them go. I'm not owing. Mm -hmm. Me, I know my own debt. I know those that I'm owing. And uh, Niger, Niger debt is not part of my, my own. But the most serious note, the setup came out yesterday or two days ago to say that, that we need to prove that over about three, was it about 3.4 billion dollars as a part of the money that we borrowed as loan from the IMF and other foreign um, uh, donor agencies that it was looted 3.4 billion dollars is it 3.4 billion yes about 3.4 billion dollars and Sarah is saying that that should be proved that the president should be able to prove that and that is how we roll most often they are not we just continue borrowing and borrowing and without having anything to show for it and I said it to another forum yesterday the newspaper review on one of uh, the national TV stations that what we need to do now if uh, these foreign donors they should put a stop to all loans to Nigeria all loans they should put a stop to that and let Nigeria give an account of what they have done with all they have borrowed probably in the last eight years mm. that will help us because Nigerians we don't even know or they will tell you oh we put the money uh, this thing the construction of uh, 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 what is it uh, if a Nigerian a second bridge and and the end there, which other one? They tell you the rail, okay, the rail. Which how many rail? The one from Kaduna to the one from Kaduna to Abuja okay. and um, Lagos to Ibadan. Which other one? So those are the issues. Corruption has been so endemic in the system that no matter how you to stop it, there are people within the system that will always circumvent it. Mm. Imagine a former AGF of this country that stole. Uh, this one is not alleged now. Stole 109 billion naira. The case is still in court. They are trying to have a, a plea bargain and is ready to return about 49 to 50 billion. So after that one, that means we are allowed to go away with about 59 billion or what? Look at the 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 the, the, the well corrupt Minister of Monetary Affairs that was supposed to be handling issues related to money. I had to <laughs> I had to be able to eradicate poverty in Nigeria. See how much was stolen. That somebody says she mistakenly transferred 40 billion from that account to her account. <laughs> and we are still here. Somebody who is a minister and suspended, do you, have, you, have you realized that that, that issue has, uh, has come down? Nobody's talking about it again. Mm -hmm. I said it on this program. Like you said, yes. You know that I said it. You remember mm -hmm. I said it? Mm -hmm. You did. On this program, that give this thing another one week, you will not hear about it again. And yeah. that is it. We have gone to bed now. Nobody is talking about that issue again. And that is how it rules. Nobody will talk at it. We just make the initial noise, initial drag, and that's it. And that is why at times I also blame us, all the, all the press, journalists. I'm a journalist. I've been in practice for close to 30 years. I'm a journalist. And I know what I'm talking about. Most often than not, part of our problem is that we easily take our eyes off the ball and cutting with whatever, whatever news. All other countries, they will make sure that they see this investigation through till the end or to get the result. We have left that one. We are jumping to other ones now. And that is what is making the big. Have you seen anything about Betty Edu and the humanitarian uh, affairs scandal on the front of any newspaper in the last two weeks? Or even TV stations or radio stations? Nobody's mm -hmm. talking about it. And that is it. Because most of and that embodies most of this, um, uh, um, this government officials because they know just back and back and shout. And that is the end there. Until we bring to continue to hold people accountable and make sure that we've made sure that they are prosecuted and they suffer for their deeds, then it becomes what it is. In as much as I know that this is still within the realm of allegations as far as the, it, that issue is concerned. But what is being done, the investigation panel that was raised, what have they, you mean that it's taking them, it's going to take them one year to investigate that issue and they will not be able to come out with a report on that. But mm -hmm. that is a problem. Anyhow, well, this is where we have to drop it here. We'll have to drop the ball here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Chris. It's always nice having you on our program. Yes, yeah, thank you very much for having me. As I said, though, I've exonerated myself. I'm not owing anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not owing either. <laughs> the average Nigerian, not me. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, have a nice day. Yes, you too. All right, we'll be speaking with Chris Kende Wandu. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. But he was joining us here in Lagos State. We'll go on a short break, look at the weather, and when we return, we'll be looking at a hot topic. Stay with us.